Ben Hodges, Pershing Chair in Strategic Studies, Center for European Policy Analysis. I believe the Kremlin is intent on war with Ukraine because Russia is increasingly confident that the West will not actually do anything about it. We didn't really do anything about their invasion of Georgia in 2008. They saw our failure to act in Syria and our failure to punish them in any meaningful way after their invasion of Ukraine in 2014. Our reaction so far to the current crisis has been ineffective and confused and is a manifestation of the absence of a comprehensive strategy for the greater Black Sea region. Germany, France, and the UK have been utterly disappointing in their total lack of effort or pressure on the Kremlin. But the US is responsible for leadership and we've been soft or absent on the Kremlin since 2008. Only a reversal of this trend of minimizing Russia as a threat and the renewed cohesion of the US and its allies in holding the Kremlin accountable will prevent a conflict from happening. President Biden's assessment of Putin as a killer is accurate and his unequivocal declaration that Ukrainian sovereignty and territorial integrity are a priority for the United States was strong. But it remains to be seen what that actually means. Stephen Pfeiffer, fellow, Robert Bosch Academy. As the Russian military has dramatically built up its forces near Ukraine, Western leaders including President Biden, Chancellor Merkel, and President Macron have called on Moscow to withdraw those troops and escalate the situation. They should encourage others to reiterate those calls. It remains unclear whether Russia's saber-rattling aims just to unnerve Kyiv and test the West's reaction or foreshadows new Russian military action against Ukraine. Vladimir Putin may not yet have decided. The West should do all it can now to signal to the Kremlin that a military incursion would result in substantial costs that should not be underestimated. Western leaders should message the Russian leadership about specific sanctions and penalties that would result from an attack. The US sanctions announced on April 15 left open the prospect of far harsher measures. One possible way to affect Kremlin cost-benefit calculations would be to communicate a list of agreed US-EU sanctions that would kick in if Russia made a new military incursion into Ukraine. In addition, the United States and others should provide military assistance, such as additional Javelin anti-armor missiles, to Kyiv. NATO will not go to war with Russia over Ukraine, but it can show its readiness to help the Ukrainians defend themselves. Daniel Fried Distinguished Fellow, Atlantic Council. Unlike in 2008, when the US and Europe were slow to recognize the danger of Putin's buildup against Georgia, the West has this time warned the Kremlin that renewed aggression against Ukraine would be met with action. The Biden administration's sanctions announced on April 15 were imposed in response to Kremlin actions unrelated to Ukraine, but they indicated seriousness of purpose and make more credible the threat of further measures should Putin launch a new offensive or other aggressive steps. Nor is Biden alone is cautioning Putin. On April 8, German Chancellor Merkel told Putin to back off. And speaking with US journalists on April 18, French President Macron warned Putin not to escalate against Ukraine and suggested that additional sanctions would be appropriate if Putin did. Putin appears to be, like Soviet leaders before him, a calculator of his adversary's determination. He may be testing whether the West is asleep or too distracted to act. It isn't. Moreover, Putin keeps alienating European governments, the Czechs being the latest example, with reckless aggression. The West's solidarity with Ukraine, with Chechia, and with others under Kremlin pressure, can be effective. We should keep it up.